Hi guys, how are you going? It's Campbell here from Autodidactic Channel. Hope you're having an amazing day. As always guys, autodidactic means to be self-educated and in these times we need to be self-educated because the story we're being given just does not add up. And that's what I want to talk about today. So today we're going to have a look at some buildings, some out of place Tartarian looking buildings in country New South Wales. So let's get into it. Alright guys, so I just wanted to show you whereabouts we're looking at. This is New South Wales. Now, if we come up you can see this is Sydney here. So we're on the south coast of New South Wales. Now, we're going to have a look at some buildings in this area. So Nowra, uh, I've got a couple from Berry and a uh, very nice structure in Kangaroo Valley. So yeah, I just wanted to show you the, the region there because as you can see, this is, there's not a lot around here. This is Nowra um, and that, that that's it. So it's not big. Um, I'm not sure what the population is. I think it's around sort of 50,000 maybe at the moment. Um, and then out here, of course, these these towns are just, you know, they're, they're just nothing. They're just little farming communities, basically. So the population out here is small, and it's always been that way. It's always been small. So let's just have a look. Now in New South Wales is a town south coast region of New South Wales, blah, blah, blah. History. The Nowra region south of Bomaderry Creek was inhabited by the Wodi Wodi tribe of the Yuan Nation, while the North Bomaderry Creek was inhabited by the Darwal Aboriginal people prior to European arrival around 1824. Um, Mary Ribe applied for a land grant in the Burrier area and the southern, southern side of Shoalhaven River. The Nowra Township was officially recognised in 1852. Less than 10 years later, in 1861, a postal service was established. Also in that year, the racehorse Archer won the Melbourne Cup. So we're talking 1850s, it was um, settled. Uh, township was officially recognised in 1850. Um, and then it says, you know, there was structures, first structures around 1840. We've got some heritage listing buildings. Okay, so this is now and now, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> All right, so this is now and the population, as you can see here, 37,000. That's as of today, 37,000 people. So if we go and have a look at the history, um, I'm not sure if this is the right page. Um, yeah, actually, that's all I could find. They didn't really tell me. That's all the history there is. There's no sort of populations or anything. This one I found interesting. This is uh, Heritage Tourism. And it's just got all these dates in here of when uh, buildings have been built. So, we, we, you know, the town was founded 1852. Okay, it had a very small population. Um, let's have a quick look. Population now... Uh, uh, let's go 1900. I did look for this before. Let's see what we pop up here. Coastal region. I've even been through the censuses and what I found was the Shoal River area is all I could find. Um, but it's a bit strange. It just sort of gives you these. I'm not sure what the numbers are, this fish thing. Um, but I couldn't even find Nowra. It was basically all under Shoal River. I'm going to pick you up. Under, sorry, Shoal Haven. Um, Nowra. So there it is. So, so it's been grouped together in that whole region. But it's, so it's not even big enough to be a town on its own. But like I said, I couldn't, I can't find the actual population back in the 1850s. But let's get back into this. So Nowra Showground. Uh, so that was established 1887 the public school was built 1862 
as you can see, a bit of brick building there. I've come down here, now a museum, 1900, 1899, the Anglican Church, 1887, the former rectory. I always find that a strange word <laughs> for somewhere that a priest lives, a rectory. Um, okay, now a courthouse, 1896. Okay, so lots of buildings built within, what, 20 or 30 years of the town being founded and, and the population was probably in the hundreds. Uh, home built, 1886. We get down here, Memorial Gates. Okay, so this one it says was 1931. I'll show you those later. They're pretty interesting. But you can see there was lots of things built, you know, 1902, 1892, this big building, School of the Arts. 1905, so lots of buildings built, 1877, another big stone church, 1893, this is a big, that's a big stone building, um, I'm not sure, we can't really see that, um, I'll show you later though, that in Australia, they put these verandas on them and it just completely changes the look of the building. Albion Hotel, that's a nice hotel, solid red brick, 1880. Okay, so that's, you know, less than 30 years, 29 years after the, the town was founded, you know, named a township. 1883, the Postman's Tavern, another nice big brick building. Okay, so where are these bricks coming from and who's building them? You know, <laughs> what's going on here, guys? Seriously, this story doesn't make sense. Prince of Wales Hotel, 1883. I'll leave a link to this in the description too. Another big church, huge church, 1875, Bridge Hotel, 1886, another one in the 1800s, 1884, National Australia Bank, all these, 1845, Catholic oh, Cemetery, fair enough, <laughs> 1875, another church. Okay, so these are all being built, you know, within 20 or 30 years of this township, you know, township being recognised. And the, the population was just nothing. Now these are the photos. So this is the original post office that they said 1880. Now I want you to just notice these arches. This of course is on a big slant as well. And it looks like that's either just been built on the roof. It looks like it's just, they just built a house on the roof there. So you can imagine how well this structure was built. This is some streets. This is Berry, I believe, which is close to now. But again, just look at, you know, this is the architecture we see everywhere. Nice bits on the top here. Not sure exactly what they are. Look at this. This shape, see this step in shape? You see it everywhere, guys. If you, if you keep your eyes peeled, that, that, that just comes up everywhere. Okay, we'll go to the next one. Uh, this is a church in the region. Uh, so tell us. Now on the Shoalhaven River, old fire station. What? Built 1908. I'm not sure if that's... Methodist Church, built 1877 in Nowra. Uh, so that's like 25 years after the town was founded. You can see the height of that thing. I mean, just there is at least two stories that'd be another one you know it's a lot of work who's doing all this work this is apparently uh, the fire brigade from 19 what does it say there 1908 and again see this arch nice big arch obviously it's been filled in it's just a strange looking building that one isn't it it's just a funny little it's definitely old world looking though, it's got a lot of the markers. Got these bits on top, bit of Antiquitech. Obviously it's been rebranded as a fire station. Uh, this is another whole old house. Now you can see the beautiful work here. Whoa. Um, <laughs> that didn't work very well, did it? Let's try that again. Okay, see this? And you can see up here these things, you see these everywhere. 
Now, I'm not sure if that's that stepped in brick feature or if that's just like waterproofing. It looks like it's stepped in a bit. And then of course columns. Columns everywhere and the symmetry, you know, the arched windows underneath. And this is what they do in Australia is they put these verandas on the outside and they build them out and it completely changes the look of the building. So this one, um, 1880 they're saying that was built. Obviously it's being used as a house now. Now this is uh, the wall memorial. Of course everything has to be taken over by um, war. I'm not sure what this statue is. <clears throat> it just looks like a, a bronze of a Anzac type soldier. <laughs> looks like he's, has he got a cigarette? I don't know. He's got his boots on and his helmet down there. Now just, this is sandstone. Now I'm not sure. I've seen a lot of stuff lately and this, all this work seems to be facades. Because you can see even here we've got these bits but they're squared off so has this been covered uh, is this actually red brick because we've got the arch and everything it's been filled in of course but the arch is here but the look is all sandstone is that is that just sandstone casing because you know otherwise it just looks very familiar doesn't it but it if you can imagine that in red brick and these more, you know, the curved, more stylized ones. But anyway, this, yeah, apparently was just built <clears throat> as an entranceway. Um, now, Nara in that part of New South Wales, um, you know, in World War I, they did have a lot of, they sent a lot of people off and I think there may have even been um, training stations down there and ships and things. Not sure on that. Someone will no doubt let me know, but... But yeah, look at that, just, just, yeah. Here's another shot of it, so it sort of keeps going, stepping down. Um, that's just an old little building, and that's what we have from there. So, let's have a look at some photos. Uh, okay. Okay, so this is uh, Junction Street in Nowra. Not exactly sure of the date, but by looking at the cars, you know, probably circa 1920, 1930, it looks like that's an old cart still, horse drawn, so it's kind of, you know, that kind of period. Notice this lamp, apart from the fact that it's in the middle of the street. Apart from the fact that it's in the middle of the street, if you can see like these sort of arches and just the way that it's shaped, you know, oh, let's see if we can get in and have a look at it. But you'll see this kind of shape everywhere, and they always and they tend to have two or three lights or the single lights that just pop off the top. So they're yeah, they're everywhere in the in the, in the old photos. Um, you still do see them in old cities in Europe and, and places like that. So keep an eye out for those. You also see those those stylized bollards, you know, everywhere. So this is now also you can see here the verandas they've put on pretty much all these shops down here. This one as well. But you can see these these are old world buildings. If we get down to have a look down, it's not the best contrast, but you can see that these are big brick buildings. They've got the front big sort of facade things on them. There you go, there's another horse and cart. So yeah, this probably 1920s or something like that. So that's the uh, main street of Nara. This is another shot. Um, that That's a different lamp in the middle of the street. Now look, see this. See this building here? Obviously that's got all the markers of Tartarian old world architecture. It's even got, got these, you know, antiquated bits all along the top. They are no doubt gone now. This is an old photo. But you can see this building. It's nice and clear. And this one hasn't... I don't think it's got anything on the bottom here as far as these balconies. 
um, or you know these roofs, verandas. But see how this one's coming off, and it just completely changes the look of the building. And you can see this one. This is the same. You can see it's got these bits popping up. It's the same exact architecture, pretty much. But they've covered it with these verandas, and it just it looks like a completely different building. And you can see they've done it all the way up the street. And then in the middle, we've got this guy standing on one of these lamps. So here we go again. Now, you have this design, you know, where it sort of steps in. These are normally, you've got these sort of grooves, long grooves. You have this bit. And then on the top, they either have this, a single lamp, something like this, or you'll get three sometimes, or two, or even four. Um, but you see them everywhere. Ever, especially on bridges, old, old um, pictures of bridges. Okay, so this is now. So this is yeah, Main Street of Nowra. Does that say ninety one down there? Let's see. Oh, sorry, not Junction Street Nowra. So, uh, and, and another thing to notice in these guys is um, there's only one person in this photo. Where is everyone? Now, where is everyone? This is a boxing photo, so I don't know. You no know, 1920s, maybe? Earlier? Who knows? But there's no one there. And look, it's just completely built out. Uh, this again, this is the same junction that we just looked at. Um, <clears throat> I think. Let's have a look. Yeah, pretty sure it is. Is that the same there? Yeah, it is. So you can see here, this has still got the veranda, but see this one hasn't got any on it. So this is before they put these bottom ones along here. You can't unfortunately see up the street because of this, this big thing. But this is obviously old. There's no cars. This would be, you know, turn of the century late 1800s and you can see yeah, old world Tartarian buildings when I mean, there's a couple of people around but that's not a lot of people this is the main street and these are supposed to be pubs Prince of Wales Hotel and Albion Hotel so a pub in Australia is you know it's um, I don't know, a, ho <laughs> a bar somewhere you go to drink so basically in in country Australia back in the day they, they were the meeting places it's just not that many people around. I'm not sure what's happened to that lamp either. Is there any sign of it? I'm not sure. We may... Because this is earlier than that other photo, so I don't know. See that? <clears throat> Excuse me. Maybe it was added later. Who knows? Okay, street scene of Nara again. This is a bit later. This looks like the 30s, but look at this street, completely built out. You know, with the Tartarian buildings, the old world. Look at them all. All oh, got that little antique tech on the top, and look at these arches here, like we've seen in those other couple of buildings. This, I believe, is the courthouse. Can't remember. Um, but also these buildings just, I don't know. They just look very wide and short. But anyway, that's Nara. Uh, this is just an old photo I found of this looks like after World War One yet with all the soldiers who are coming back. But look at the building they're standing in front of. You know, we've got the pillars, you know, we've got all these windows. And again, it looks like it's been facaded with sandstone. Um, and just notice as well that, you know, quite a few steps to get up to the front door. Oh no, so that wasn't the courthouse in the last picture. This is the courthouse. Now look at that arch. So I'm not sure what's going on with these arches. I, and again, this just looks like the top of a building. It doesn't look like, you know, it just looks strange. Either that or some kind of gate. But it doesn't look like, you know, it looks too short. But again, classic red brick. You've got these port windows that we see, the round windows. You can see on the inside that was again another arch. They filled it in. Now we have all this 
classic sort of architect stuff, but yeah, these arches in Nara. And there's a frog at it. Yeah, see? If you're in this area, guys, let me know. Arches. This again looks like it's been filled in or at least covered. And of course, you can see there's walls going around here as well. Uh, this is uh, one of the pubs, I think. I'm not exactly sure what building this is, but again, look at the arches. This is definitely in the same region. If it's not in now, it's close by. You know, so it's, and look, <laughs> this is a big building. You can see again, there's no one there. There's like two people here, I think, maybe one there. Uh, what's that say? 1885. That can't be a right as a date. I mean, what are these things? There's a car there, yeah. So this is more like 1930s. Looks like they've put a telegraph pole or like a power pole straight up through the roof. But yeah, just look at the size of that building and, you know, the symmetry, you know, these things all spaced out. All, it's... Yes, very nice building. So, you know, really, I mean, this is this has all been built in the time that we're told, like, literally 1850s is when they stopped bringing convicts to Australia. So Australia was just a small, new little country, but suddenly we're building all these massive buildings. We've got all these skilled architects and stonemasons and builders and craftsmen. I mean, just to get this kind of stuff made. And they just try to try the story is just oh yeah well it was either slaves or it was just I don't know labour <laughs> I mean come on guys let's see the people who write this stuff down go and build this they're unskilled labour right I mean they couldn't silly see how there's a door in here you can actually get across so this guys oops whoa, whoa, whoa. this is a bridge this is in Kangaroo Valley. Kangaroo Valley has a population, I'm pretty sure it's 879 people. Now, this was built in 1898, so they say. To cover this river for, now you can imagine how many people were in Kangaroo Bluff in 1898. Sorry, Kangaroo Valley, not Kangaroo Bluff. Here's an old picture of it. Looks very set up. And as you can see, I mean, just look at this. No, look at that. I mean, perfect symmetry. Look at that. Well, it all just lines up perfectly. And again, you know, it's got all these features. So have these all been covered? You know, if anyone's out there around this region, there's an old building. See if you can get out the back of it and kick the wall, see if anything falls off. Here's another shot. You know, if it's, why would they go to this much of elaborate effort for a bridge for, you know, a couple hundred people, literally farmers. So, you know, they would have had stuff they would have had to move, but we're not talking heavy stuff. It's not coal or metal or anything. And <laughs> look at the size of this bridge. Ah, the stories we are told. Now, I found this. Searching, you know, again, nothing really. The only thing you find about the construction of this is uh, the names of an architect or two and the dates that they tell us it was built in. Uh, so look at this photo. Can you see anything about it? Like the fact that the bridge is completely finished, 100% finished. Looks like they've, you know, they've put a little ladder here, a bit of scaffold, you know, a few bits lying around. But that bridge is finished 100%. The only thing they may not have done is covered up with all the finishings. So these dudes weren't building this bridge, they were covering it in limestone. I mean, where are all their tools? 
If they constructed this, there'd be stuff everywhere if this was a new construction. And and how set up does it look? I mean, I know, you know, they take photos of work groups and things, but you know, this guy's got a bow tie on. But I don't know. That bridge is finished. That is completely finished. So again, like everything else, there's just nothing. There's no, and you know, look, that's proof that they had photos. You know, they could take photos back then when they say that these buildings were built. So where are all the photos? I mean, that, that was a massive construction. And, and you know, not just this. Look, some of the buildings that you see in the cities, the huge ones, you're telling me that they, they could take photos, but no one took photos of these amazing buildings going up. I mean, come on. It's, it's just a story, guys. It's just made up. It's not true. This is inside one of the churches. And again, just look at the craftsmanship, but look at the size. And you can imagine if these people are standing up, they're going to be here somewhere. They can't even see out these windows. Not that they're made to look out, I know, but look at this massive half dome here. I mean, that, that could be in an Islamic mosque. Whoops. Seriously. Okay, this is all part of a same culture, a same belief system, you know, a same way of looking at the world. I mean, look at that work. Is it called a pulpit? Is that what it's called? I don't know. Is that what they call it? So these are buildings that have been taken over and retrofitted. Look at the size of that roof. Now, again, this was the St. Mary's Church um, that was built... You know, 18, it was in the 1800s. Oh, you know, is it this one, St. Michael's Church? 1877. You know, it was founded, so that's literally 26 years after this place became a township. Now, I can understand people building churches, and we see lots of photos of these little wooden churches all over the place. So, <laughs> with no people living there, no population, why would they do this? How could how could they do this? Where did the money come from? Where did the labour, the skilled labour, the architects? I mean, <laughs> this is a street in Berry, that town that, that's close by. And again, these are small towns, little farming communities in the middle of nowhere, and you just find the same stuff. You know, the same Tartarian old world architecture everywhere. And like I say, in Australia, they just put these verandas on them just to change the look of them. Because then, of course, you can put these little, you know, facades at the front and it just completely changes the look. But these are all arched windows. This is the same building. It goes across. They've taken this one out, put a door in there. I don't know if it's been added or just, I don't know, they've done something there. It's really ugly. But come on, this is... <clears throat> and these would be dated to the same time, late 1800s. No one living there, and they're just running around building these massive, big, two-story, red big buildings with all this intricate craftsmanship and work in them. Here's another one. You can see the, the port windows. See them everywhere. Everything in symmetry. You know, even these lines they put in, or is that, I don't know. Maybe that's piping, but you do see when they step out and it's always done. I'm not sure if that's it or not. It could be, yeah, I don't know. That's a hard one. But here, see another arch door. So this is the picture we saw before, but from the side. So you can see these arches. You know, they're all perfect. They'd be the perfect height, perfect everything. And they turn them into shops. And, you know, the life of these buildings too is pretty much non-existent. <laughs> you know, they build them and they, they, they serve their purpose for 20 years, some of them 30 years, and then they're turned into shops or something else. So there we go. There's some photos from, this is just like one little region in Australia, guys. Uh, this is that bridge we looked at, the Hampton Bridge, in uh, crosses Kangaroo River. And this is literally what we get. Uh, 
now it doesn't even say that but that's a building date it says Hampton Bridge is a suspension bridge across Kangaroo River located in the town of Kangaroo Valley New South Wales it is named after Lord Hampton oh, governor of New South Wales so he was the governor for four years history is I mean this, this is it this is the history of this bridge this amazing bridge one of the few suspension bridges in Australia and this is what we get Hampton Bridge was designed by Ernest McCartney de Berg, the, the colony's assistant engineer for bridges to replace the decaying timber truss bridge which originally spanned the Kangaroo River. The bridge was opened on the 19th of May 1898, just six days before floods washed away the old bridge. That's a nice story. Construction was by Thomas Loveridge, so one person built it, so two people built it, <laughs> and Herbert Hudson and began in 1895 three years guys three years to build that bridge okay in the 1890s when there's no one there these guys three years took them to build this already completed bridge look at this suspension cable 1898 guys Australia out in the country little farming community Okay, three years to build this. They have no tools, there's nothing here. Yet they had photography. Okay, do you see I mean, this is all just a story, guys. His story is not our story. This is a lie. History's been covered up. Clearly, this is all we get. Nothing. Kangaroo Valley, New South Wales is a river valley along Kangaroo Valley in the Shoalwater, New South Wales region. The history is um, the area was first settled in 1817 when explorers came through with cattle. By the mid 1840s, a number of dairy farmers had made their re the region their home, producing blah blah blah. By the 1870s, activities had begun to concentrate in the area that is now the village. As you saw the village on Google Earth, that tiny little thing. <clears throat> Uh, such as uh, other centres such as Kangaroo Valley, such as, oh sorry, Trenley died when the dairy industry in the region took a turn. Both Church of Good Shepherd built in 1870 and the rectory built in 1879 was designed, blah, blah, blah. Again, no, oh, here we go, Popu oh, see, population 2016, 879 people, guys. This is in 2016. Now here, it, it does not say anywhere that, that at any time it was a big booming centre. It, all it says is that they discovered it and a few people, like a, a handful, is that what it said? Or, uh, you know, not many people moved in. And then it says in here, by the 1870s, activity had begun to concentrate in the area that is now the village as other centres in the Kangaroo Valley, such as Trendelli, died with the dairy industry in the region. So. From then it was going downhill in the 1870s. <laughs> Population today is 870. So, you know, what are we talking? 100 people, if that, and they go and build that bridge. That bridge. That. Guys, history is a lie. It, I mean, seriously, that's ridiculous. This is why we need to be autodidactic. We need to look in, we need to research, not just search and see something and say, oh, that must be the truth. We need to research and actually think and look in, look into these different things. Look at what we're being told. Look at it with new eyes. Don't believe the hype, guys. Okay, I hope you like that one. A uh, bit of a stroll through country New South Wales on the south coast. Uh, we went through Shoalhaven, Nowra and Berry and the Kangaroo Valley Bridge, all old world Tartarian structures, guys. Um, no explanation of how or why they were built. You know, literally, again, all we get is dates. So I hope you like that one. Please give me a like, a comment, share this content, hit the bell, and you'll be uh, notified when I put up new videos. Uh, also, down in the description, you'll find links to all the information I've used today and also to my Facebook group, my Instagram, and there's also some autodidactic merch. If you can help support this channel, it would be greatly appreciated. And you can also get out there and tell the world 
It's time to be autodidactic, guys, because self-education is the way forward. Thanks for spending some time with me. Have an amazing day, and I'll catch you on the next upload. Bye for now.